Formula One has a problem, a big problem. You see, every year there's one or two seats available for the newcomers and rookies and returning drivers to make their way into F1. For example, for 2022, two seats are available, and they were filled by Alex Albon, who was returning, and Guan Yu Zhou, who was a rookie. In 2021, there were four seats available. Yuki Tsunoda, Nikita Mazbin, Mick Schumacher, and Fernando Alonso filled them all. And 2020, there was only one seat available, which Nicholas Latifi occupied at Williams. Now, three out of these seven drivers who were entering Formula One were pay drivers. Now, if I count out Alex and Fernando, who had already been in F1 before, so that means that 60% of rookies who entered F1 for the first time in the last three years are pay drivers. Now, if you don't know what a pay driver is, I'll let you know quickly. Well, the clue is in the name. It's someone who pays for their seat in Formula 1, or any motorsport for that matter. And when I mean pay, I don't mean they pay a couple thousand or a couple hundred thousand. We're talking usually anywhere from 20 million a year to spending a few hundred million on buying a team for your son. <coughs> Lawrence Stroll. I'm extremely angry. Now, pay drivers aren't necessarily bad drivers. For example, the likes of Sergio Perez and this random guy called Michael Schumacher, I don't know who he is, uh, they were both pay drivers when they first entered F1. But recently, let's just say that the pay drivers haven't necessarily impressed us too much. I mean, the likes of Nicholas Atifi and Keita Maspin are prime examples of this. Now, a reason for their subpar performances could be that pay drivers usually go to teams that need a bit of extra cash, like Williams, Haas or Alfa Romeo, who are normally towards the bottom of the grid. Now, by no means are pay drivers bad at driving. I mean, look at Lance Stroll. He's definitely improved massively as he scored a pole position in Turkey in 2020, not bad for a driver who doesn't deserve his seat. So, do pay drivers actually deserve their seat? Well, it depends. I'll use the example I used earlier with Michael Schumacher and Sergio Perez. Sergio Perez is arguably one of the best drivers we have on the current grid, and Michael Schumacher, well, we all know how he turned out. So first, let me get something straight. Pretty much every single driver on the grid right now is a pay driver as they bring personal sponsors to the teams they drive for. For example, Mick Schumacher has Under Armour, Kevin Magnussen brought Jack and Jones to Haas, Carlos Sainz has Estrella G G Galassia, I think that's how you say it. So yeah, pretty much all drivers are technically pay drivers. But today we're talking about the ones that pay millions, usually from family money, to be an F1. But why is this a problem? Well first let me talk to you a little bit about one of my favourite drivers, Oscar Piastri. Sorry, yes I know I talk about him loads on my channel, but he's one of my favourite drivers, so what can I say? So Oscar joined Formula 3 in 2020, just off the back of winning the Formula Renault Euro Cup. And guess what he did in Formula 3? Yes, he won it. And then, obviously he moved to Formula 2 and dominated and won the whole thing. So yes, he won Formula Renault Euro Cup, Formula 3 and Formula 2 all in back-to-back-to-back -back -back years. The only driver to win Formula 3 and Formula 2 back-to-back -back was Charles Leclerc and George Russell, so Oscar Piastri is kind of on their level. But Oscar's not going to be in F1 next year. Guan Yu Zhou is going to be there instead, and Guan Yu Zhou only finished P3 in F2 in 2021, and that was his third year in Formula 2. But why is he in F1? Well, you guessed it. Zhou has a rumoured £30 million, which he will bring to Alfa Romeo, so yes, he's a pay driver. So now Oscar Piastri, who in my opinion deserves a seat way more than Guan Yu Zhou, is now sitting on the sidelines as an Alpine reserve driver for 2022. And let's be honest, I don't think he'll be racing very much in 2022. Now another example of a very talented driver who got thrown to the sidelines is Nick DeFries. I've made a whole video on why I think Williams need Nick DeFries for 2023, so watch it here if you want to find out. So this is a bit about Nick. He was a McLaren Junior driver up until 2018. Then, Zac Brown came along and wanted Lando Norris to be that star driver for McLaren instead of Nick DeFries. So Nick ended up winning the Formula 2 title in 2019, beating out the likes of Nicholas Satifi, Mick Schumacher and Akita Mazepin. Then, he moved to Mercedes EQ in Formula E, as well as doing a bit of testing for the Mercedes F1 team, but in my opinion, his chances in F1 seem pretty slim at this point. Well, if you have enjoyed the video this far, please do consider subscribing. It's free, only takes a few seconds and you can always unsubscribe later if you want. Oh and by the way, I made a Discord, there's a link down below so please make sure you check it out and join. We're always active on there and I'd love to talk to you guys. So yeah, if you want to help grow this channel, leave a like and share a video with a friend. Thanks. So these pay drivers seem to be stopping exceptional talent from getting into F1, but why is this? Well, ever since the dawn of F1, it's been perceived as a rich person's sport and I just can't argue with this. 
I mean, let me just run you down the pricing for an aspiring F1 driver's junior career. Let's say you start your career in carts like most F1 drivers do, and that's gonna set you back about 10,000 pounds a year from say age six to about, I don't know, age 11. And then at age 11, you move up to international carts, which you can spend up to almost 100,000 pounds a year. Now, hopefully you're good enough to move up to the Formula 4, and you're probably gonna spend 300,000 pounds a year and this is just on driving, excluding accommodation, transport, etc, etc. Formula 3 is the next level up and you're roughly going to spend about 500k a year. Just pocket change for you, isn't it? <laughs> but Formula 2 is where it gets expensive. That's about anywhere from 1 to 3 million pounds a year. So, a junior career in motorsport is going to cost you about... So for cars, it's from age 6 to age 15, it's about 90k plus 200,000 for the international cars. Then a year in F4 is going to cost you about 300, plus a year in F3 and F2, which gets us to about 4.2 million pounds. And that's assuming that you only spend one year in each junior formula. And I'm sorry, I highly doubt you're going to be that good to spend only one year in each junior formula. You're probably going to have like two in F2, three in F3 and so on. Now, my hope for the future is that motorsport in general can be a bit cheaper. For example, let's say I want to go karting at my local indoor kart track. It's going to set me back about 70 quid per hour of karting, which is pretty steep. So maybe motorsport and F1 in general is always going to be gated off to common folk like us. But saying that, the future looks bright. Sem, I don't know how to say it, Sem Boloskasi, an F1 esports driver, is going to make his F2 debut in 2022. This shows that all you need to do to get to F2 is have a couple thousand pounds and get a steering wheel and some pedals in the F1 game and maybe you can make it, which I think is just inspiring. So yeah, that's F1's big problem. The massive barrier to entry and the people with butt tons of money not letting the drivers with some real talent shine through. So before I sign off, let me give you a quick tour of our Discord server. So Gen Chat is pretty much self-explanatory you can just talk to people about f1 or motorsport or anything in general for that matter then we've got f1 news these are going to be talking about everything f1 all the news that's coming to the world of f1 and it's just great to discuss your opinions on it and we've got predictions now this is my favorite channel as we all talk about our different predictions for the next f1 season or like formula e for example because that recently just happened we have an f1 memes channel where you can find the best f1 memes and to be honest my discord is pretty funny so we have some pretty good memes there Another channel we have is video ideas. Now you may be seeing in the past couple of weeks I've been posting in my community tab what video ideas uh, people want. Now this has been taken from my video ideas channel on Discord. So if you want to have your ideas voted on by everyone, join the Discord and give a video idea. Thanks. So anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching. I've been Connor and I'll see you later. Bye.